Hey guys, so I wasn't actively planning on doing a back to school video type series thing because every beauty guru here on YouTube have that cover. So, so I was thinking, and you know, I wanted to do a DIY that people could do it every time of the year. So what I did is I gathered five different ways to spice up your shirt. And basically this is going to be a back to school shirts inspired by Tumblr. And they were super inexpensive. I literally got all the shirts for like a dollar in a lot of uh, outlet stores. And some of them I already had on my closet. So it was really inexpensive. And the material, I didn't even spend like $15 in the whole materials. So this is really inexpensive. And it's really, really simple, really easy. And yeah, I think this is a really great idea for a back to school video because I didn't want to do like, oh yeah, back to school supplies. So I wanted to do something different. So I'm going to show you five different ways to spice up your shirts. And as I said, you can do this any time of the year. It doesn't have to be back to school. And before we get started, I just wanted to say something that uh, you may need to know how to make some stencils and stuff like that. I have a few videos that might help you. I will have them linked down below so you can go and click those if you haven't watched those. But if you know how to make stencils and what kind of fabric thing to use, then you can just continue watching this video. And with that being said, let's get into the DIYs. The first way I'm going to show you is the one you might already know, which is the fabric paint method. I've already done this tutorial with this method, but I thought I might add this for people who are unfamiliar with it. So you will need a shirt that it's kind of the same color of the cover of the book, something to put between the two layers of your fabric, fabric paint in black and white, sponge brush, a small paintbrush, and a reduced version of the stencil of the clouds. I'm only painting on the pocket, I'm inserting a post-it between the two layers to prevent the paint from bleeding. This is the exact same thing as I did on the sweater. So if you haven't watched that video, you can watch it for some reference, but I'm basically starting off with the white cloud and then I'm going to paint a couple of coats and letting it dry completely between coats. And after that, I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the top with the black cloud. And since I'm a super impatient person, instead of waiting for each coat to dry, I just use a blow dry to speed up the process and that worked just fine for me. And after everything is dried, you can remove all your stencils and tape and whatever. And after you remove everything, you can start writing the OK on both clouds. And remember, the first cloud, it's a question and the second one is an affirmation. So in the first one, you need to put a question mark at the end and in the last one, you need to put a period. Okay, so this method is very similar to the previous one, only that we are going to make our own fabric paint using some acrylic paint and fabric medium. You will need something to put between the two layers of your fabric, a shirt, your stencil already made, a sponge brush, acrylic paint and fabric medium, a container with a lid, something to measure and mix with, and an iron. First of all, you have to pre-wash your garment. After that, you have to iron your shirt. Leave the shirt aside and get your acrylic paint, your tray, and your fabric medium. It's time for you to read the instruction. Mine asks for two parts acrylic paint, one part acrylic medium. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix two tablespoons of black paint and one tablespoon of acrylic medium. Insert the cardboard between the two layers of your fabric to prevent the paint from bleeding to the other side of your shirt. Start painting over your design with your sponge brush, painting on an up and down motion. No strokes. Give it two to three coats and let it dry completely between coats. Or if you're too impatient like me, you can just basically use a blow dryer to just basically speed up the process of letting it dry between coats. Because ain't nobody got time for waiting. Just saying. And once it's completely dry, you can start removing your stencil. You can use your X-Acto knife to help you remove the small parts because, let's face it, sometimes it's difficult. If some of the paint bleed through the stencil, it's okay. You can just fix it with a little bit of paint and a small paintbrush. Once it's completely dry, place a fabric scrap on top of your design and iron it for a couple of seconds. And once you iron it from the front, you're going to turn it inside out and you're going to iron from inside. And once you have done that, you're going to basically heat set the paint to the shirt. And that's it for this way to pump up your shirt. I also use the exact same method to do this kind of shirt and I really, really love it. This one has got to be the easiest of them all and I only spent 4 bucks on the whole thing. The iron on letters method. You will need a shirt, some scrap fabric, iron on letters and an iron. 
Start by ironing your shirt where your design is going to be placed. After that, start arranging your letters in the way you want to spell whatever word you want. And then I'm using a straight edge to align all the letters. Now follow the instructions for your iron-on letter since all the package are different. Mine just recall to protect my letters with some scrap fabric and then ironing for a couple of seconds in a medium-high heat with my iron for a couple of seconds and concentrating with the tip on the edges of the letters. Once the letters have cooled, you just basically peel off the paper that is protecting the letters. And if you peel off and the letter still doesn't stick to your shirt, just cover it up with the fabric again and just iron for a couple of more seconds. And yeah, basically do that. Do that, do that, do that, do that, I'm sorry. I'm covering the letters with the fabric and go in one last time with my iron on top of the letters to make sure they will stick very nicely onto my shirt. And now you're finished! I also made this shirt but I made it off camera but it's basically the same thing and I really like how it turned out. This one is the cheapest of all but not the easiest cause it does take a while. The Sharpie plus iron method. You will need a light color shirt, the design you want your shirt to have, a sharpie marker and an iron. Start by ironing where your design is going to be drawn on. Insert the drawing between the two layers of your fabric. Since the fabric is light, you are going to be able to see the design through the fabric. If you cannot see it through the fabric, I'm actually going to show you how to make it in dark color fabrics. Start by outlining the design with your sharpie marker. Once you have all the outlines, start by filling the letters or the design. Not gonna lie, this is going to take a while, so you might want to turn on your TV or watch a movie. And once you finish filling all the design, you're going to want to take your iron on a high heat and make sure it doesn't have any water or steam because if it does, it's going to occur what happened to me here. But I actually like it because, well, the design of the shirt is kind of like it's being drawn into a wall so I really like it but if you want to prevent this don't have any water on your iron just saying this is going to set the paint into your shirt and once it's cooled off it's finished and this one is just like the last one only that it's for dark color fabrics you will need a dark color fabric the design you want your shirt to have this paper which I got at the office supplies store and it just basically transfer designs into paper, a pencil, an iron, a bright sharpie marker, and a folder or a notebook. Start by ironing your shirt where your design is going to be placed. Insert the notebook or the folder in between the two layers of your fabric and place the transfer paper with the shiny side facing you. I really don't know how this is called so if someone knows please tell me in the comments below so I can put it on the screen and basically you just need to put the design on top of that and then with your pencil, you're going to go through all your design like I'm showing you in the video. And you cannot really see on the video, but the transfer sheet of paper is actually transferring the design onto your shirt. So you just basically go all around your design with your pencil. And now you can actually kind of see how the design transfer into your shirt. So that's going to help you go over the design with your sharpen marker. And I will recommend you to use a bright sharpie marker. I'm using a metallic one, which it really just sticks really well to your shirt and just basically go all around your design, filling in all the design that it was transferred. And again, you're just going to go on top of your design with your iron and make sure it doesn't have any steam or water in it and just iron the design for a couple of seconds. And this is going to set the sharpie ink and the last one is actually my favorite and i don't know why i just think it's really colorful and fun and super simple the iron on fabric method you will need a shirt that you want to spice up the design you want your shirt to have some contrasting fabric scissors some pins and lastly heat and bond i'm using the spray one but you can easily get the sheet one if you want now since i'm using letters for my design i'm going to cut each one and I'm going to pin each letter into a piece of fabric with some pins so that way I can just basically pin it to the fabric and then that way it will be easier for me to cut it out with my scissors. With the heat and bond it will be much easier since you will basically have a sheet of paper 
iron on into your design and that will be easier for you to cut. But if you're using the, the spray like me, you have to do this step. And once you finish, you will have something like this. Now iron your shirt where your design is going to be placed. Read the instructions on your heat and bond, since the spray and the sheet ones are totally different. My spray and bond, basically I have to coat the back of the letters with the spray and then I'll need to let them dry. Well, not totally dry, just make them tacky. And after that happens, I'm just going to place them on top of my shirt. And then I'm going to iron with my iron for a couple of seconds. And once it's really iron on, you will be having a beautiful design into your shirt. And basically, I did the exact same thing with the monster tank top. It was really easy. I just followed the same step. And I have this beautiful, beautiful monster tank top that I really love. I even added a number in the back. So that's everything, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of my video. If you click on the box on the upper right corner, you will get to see my last DIY. And if you click on the box under it, you will get to see my last vlog. Right in the middle of the top section, there's a link that will take you to a random playlist of all of my videos. On the middle of the bottom, there's a button that will take you to my channel so you can subscribe. And lastly, on the upper left corner, there's all of my links to all my social medias, so you can follow me there. That's everything ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy the tour and I hope to see you soon. My name is George Cortez, at your service, thanks for watching guys.